All right. So now we have this Puglia enumeration theorem. We've answered completely the question about necklaces. Uh, I didn't do an example of doing necklaces with more than one color, but nothing is different. If you want to do it with three colors or four colors or however many colors your heart desires, uh, you can do exactly the same formula. You just replace the twos, uh, that is this M here, uh, with a different number. But what I want to do in this video is I want to do examples of coloring something else. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to use the Puglia enumeration theorem to count the number of ways to color the faces of a cube. And to help, I have a cube. And before you ask, no, I have no idea how to do a Rubik's cube. Uh, but this will be helpful to demonstrate what the symmetries of a cube are. Okay, so in order to calculate this, I need to know how many symmetries the cube has, and I need to know what the symmetries of the cube are enough to count these cycle numbers for each symmetry of the cube. So let's look at our cube and let's talk about the symmetries. So we know how many symmetries there are. That's something we've talked about before. So the number of symmetries of a cube is, and it's 24. And why is it 24? It's 24 because if I start with the cube here and I want to think about how many ways I can get it back in this position, I can choose any one of these six faces uh, to be the top facing face. And once I've chosen the top facing face, then there are four different ways that I could rotate the cube. Uh, so that I could choose what face faces me. Okay, so basically I choose the top face and then I choose the face facing me. And note, if I choose the top face, I cannot make that face face me uh, because space doesn't bend that way, I suppose you could say. Okay, so there's 24 symmetries, but we're gonna need to do better than that because we're gonna need to count the cycle numbers. So we're gonna need to actually describe what those symmetries are. Okay. So we're gonna make a complete list here of what those symmetries are. Okay. Uh, and so I'm going to first write down, so the first flavor, this is the boring flavor of symmetry. Uh, that's the symmetry where you take the cube and you do nothing to it, that's the identity. And I'm going to note there is one of these. Okay. So what else could you do? Uh, well, flavor two here, I'm going to describe as what I will call an edge rotation. So in an edge rotation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two opposite edges. And so by edges, I mean one of these uh, along the face of the cube. Uh, and so if I do this, what I can do is I can take this edge and I can flip it around like that. Okay. So I'll call this an edge rotation. What I'm doing is I'm picking a particular edge and then I'm turning that edge upside down. So here this edge goes from left to right and I flip it upside down and now this edge goes from right to left. Okay, so that is what I will again call an edge rotation. Okay, and so how many edge rotations are there? Well, at first you think, okay, there's one for every edge. But actually the edge rotation for this edge is gonna be the same as the edge rotation for this edge. So there's actually one for every pair of edges. Uh, and so if you take a second, you can count the number of edges on a cube. There are four on the top, four on the bottom, and four perpendicular to the paper here. Uh, so that is 12 total. Uh, but remember, our edge rotations, they come from pairs of edges. So that means there are six edge rotations. Okay. Uh, next. I'm going to describe what I'm going to call 
diagonal rotation. Okay, and so by a diagonal rotation, what I mean is that you're going to take one of these longest possible diagonals through the cube, like the one going through where my fingers are touching the cube here. That is, you go from a corner to the opposite corner. Uh, and then if I hold it this way, you'll see that I can turn this like that. Okay. And so basically I put it here and I can either turn it left or turn it right. And then I end up with the symmetry of the cube. And so the symmetry is going through this axis perpendicular to the paper. Okay, so we have to think for a second, how many of those are there? Well, here you might be inclined to think there's one for every diagonal. But again, remember, you could go left or right. So there's actually two for every diagonal. And there are four diagonals in total, one through each face here on the top. And so that means the total number of diagonal rotations that I'm looking for is eight. Okay, so currently we know we're looking for 24 total. Uh, we currently have 15, so we're still missing a few. Right. And so I'll break those down into two categories. And so I will call these categories the single face rotation and the double face rotation. Okay. So what's a single face rotation? So here I'm going to take the cube and I'm going to grab it by the middle of two opposite faces. And then what I can do is I can turn it this way, or alternatively, I can turn it that way. Okay. Uh, now I'm calling this a single face rotation because I'm turning the top face either to the face immediately next to it in that direction or that direction. Okay. And likewise, I can do that for any of the other pairs of opposite faces. Okay. So for each pair of opposite faces, there are two what I'm calling single face rotations. So that means in total there are six single face rotations. Okay. Uh, Next up, double face rotation. So what is a double face rotation? That's the single face rotation, but you do it twice. So I start here and I rotate once, twice. And what that ends up doing is it ends up exchanging the face on the top and the face on the bottom, and the face on the front and the face on the back, okay. or whatever. But it leaves these two faces on the side where they were to start with. Okay. so. That is what I mean by double rotation. And so you can convince yourself that there's actually only one double rotation for every uh, pair of opposite faces. And the reason why is that if I rotate twice in that direction, I undo that, and I rotate twice in that direction, I get to the same place. Rotating twice this way is the same as rotating twice this way. So in fact, I only get three double face rotations. Okay. So that is our flavors of symmetry for the cube. And you'll notice 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 8 is 15, plus 6 is 21, plus 3 is 24. Huzzah! We have all of our symmetries, and we have them all explicitly enumerated. Okay. Uh, and we need that because we need to calculate this cycle number for each of these things. Okay, so we can start with what is the cycle number of the identity? Well, that's saying, if I don't do anything to the cube, how many, pl how many 
orbits are there? That is, how many places are there that say this face could go? And the answer is there's only one. And so that means each face lives in its own orbit, uh, which means that the cycle number of the identity is six. Okay, note explicitly here the nodes that we're coloring in this example, I should specify, are going to be the faces of the cube. So there are six nodes, and the identity, uh, like always, uh, puts each, each node in its own orbit, so the number of cycles is just the number of nodes. Okay, flavor two of thing, and that was edge rotations. And so, what is C of an edge rotation? Okay, so C of an edge rotation, that's going to involve taking an edge like this and turning it upside down. Okay, so here I've taken this edge and I've turned it upside down. So I have to think, what has that done to each face? Okay. And so what did it do? Let's follow. What does it do to the blue face? It swaps it with the yellow face. And if I do that again, I get back where I started. So that means the blue face here and the yellow face here, they're one orbit under this edge rotation. Similarly, the white face here and the green face here they're also one orbit under this edge rotation. And if I do it one more time and you watch the orange face, you'll see the orange face swaps places with the red face. And so those are also an orbit. Okay. And so that is three orbits of size two. But the three is the number that matters. So there are three total cycles. The cycle number here is three. Okay. Next up, let's do the diagonal rotation. Okay, so now the diagonal rotation again, I'll remind you, looks like this, where I rotate this way. And so if I start with a rotation this way, and then I do it again, and I do it again, what I can see is actually these three faces, the three top ones, the white face, the red face, and the green face, those are all getting turned around amongst each other. So they form one orbit. Likewise, as I'm doing that same symmetry here, the faces that were previously on the bottom, the yellow face, the blue face, and the orange face, those also uh, are all getting entangled together, and so they're also an orbit which means that the number of cycles for a diagonal rotation here is two. Okay. Now, notice here I'm saving a lot of work versus what we did in the previous instance, uh, because in the previous instance I wrote down every single symmetry and I calculated C of those things separately. So if you look back here to what we did when we did the six bead necklace, we wrote down all six cycles of this sort. Okay. We don't want to write down all 24 symmetries of the cube and do this separately for each of them, because that's going to be a gigantic pain. So instead, what we're doing is we're doing them by type. So here I've calculated not just the cycle number of one edge rotation, but the cycle number of every edge rotation. And here I've calculated the cycle number of every diagonal rotation. Okay, so there are two more to go. But before I do them, I'm going to pause the video and I encourage you before we start the next video, figure out how what the cycle number is for a single face rotation and what the cycle number is for a double face rotation. And they are different. Okay. Uh, and when we come back, I'll have done those, and then we'll go ahead and we'll count the number of ways to color our cube.